Hi, I'm Shamar Griffith, codename Comic Shams. And I'm Andrew Tejada, codename Arate. I'm a blur with a love for artwork and comics and animation. And I'm a writer and blurred with a love for pretty much the same things. We grew up together and spent much of our formative years watching and talking about DC superhero shows and content. In fact, we still do. Every episode, we will discuss a DC production, compare it to its original source material, and share our thoughts on the adaptation. We've enjoyed our conversations these past couple of decades, and we think you will too. This month, we're checking out New Earths as we hop across the DC-verse on... Yet another DC animated podcast. Welcome to yet another episode of yet another DC animated podcast. My name is Shamar Griffith, codename Comic Shams. And I am Andrew Tejada, codename Arate. Andrew and I have known each other since 1996. That was the year Demon in a Bottle, the classic American Romania adventure fantasy film (laughs) was released. Um, Oh, I get it. (laughs) Yeah, Demon in the Bottle. Yeah. Um, And on the in a in properly spelled wiki page it says three teenagers found a treasure guarded by a genius in a bottle um genius <laughs> when they they accidentally release the ancient creature and have to find a way to return it to the bottle and spare their own lives oh dear god this is damn was this the, this is actually the plot of our movie in a way <laughs> it is it is it has... except, except for the genius part but right. yeah <laughs> Yeah, nobody was a genius in this movie at all. (laughs) But that's because today's movie, we are talking about the legit, the most ambitious crossover ever created. I know last week we talked about um, Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This time around, we have more teens. We have Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. You know me, the biggest Teen Titans Go fan around. (laughs) Kit couldn't wait for this one. So with Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, we got a runtime of 76 minutes by director Jeff Mednikow. Mednikow, He's one of the uh, showrunners, actually, on the show, I found out. I've been going through also a Teen Titans Go binge watch recently. Oh, I see. I see. (laughs) (laughs) I see his name pop up sometimes. (laughs) Uh, once again, our animation was done by DC Entertainment and Warner Brothers Entertainment. I feel like we also got to give a little special shout out to Cartoon Network since that is where Teen Titans Go first premiered on. And now we have our full cast. It's the uh, heavy stat cast because this is like going back a lot. We have Kevin Michael Richardson who's voicing both versions of Trigon in this movie. Weird Al Yankovic who voices Gentleman Ghost and Darkseid. As the end the credit scenario. The two toughest villains in the DC <laughs> multiverse. It makes sense. Yup, yup. Uh, Reese Darby is the master of games. We have the late Robert Morris. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away not too long ago in 2022. This is actually his last feature-length film uh, as he voices Santa Claus in this one. Oh. <laughs> Gray Delisle, she is here as Mrs. Claus. Uh, this is the first time I should get Mrs. Claus in the DC Teen Titans Go canon in their universe. Uh, we got Sean Mayer, who's reprising his role as the DC AMU Nightwing. If you're unfamiliar with that Nightwing, then please check out our first season as we went through the entire DC AMU already. And finally, we have the Teen Titans in this order. Just because it's Teen Titans Go, I have to do it right. I have to do the, the actual song. <laughs> <laughs> but I will cut into... No, I don't think I could actually add that audio. So let me not. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have Beast Boy. He could turn into any animals. Greg Sipes voices him. We have the star, the fire, the live, the wire, the alien princess and her alien attire as Hinden Walsh is voicing her once again in this film, both versions. Again, these are both versions that she's voicing. Then Buyako's Carrie Payton's Blasters as Cyborg, a.k.a. the Mr. High Tech Master, also known as the Mr. Meatball Disaster, also known as Mr. Boom Boom Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> now, Robin is here. He's got the smoke bombs and bird of ranks as both staffs hitting steady doing his thing. Scott Manvel is the leader here. Scott Manvel is in charge. We'll talk about his hands later because they're supposed to be large. 
<laughs> and finally, Raven is here to drop us up, drop it on us even harder. Tara's strong voice is her. She's as dark as can be. She's shouting that as a rap that she owns this is in those. Uh, she's the main focus of our film. So I'm just going to wrap up this cast list of an adios. Nice. Nicely done. Thank you. And, you know, before we get into the, the real verses, here's a meta verses here. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Teen Titans Go. You may <laughs> say, I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but my co-host uh it has has watched his fair share and and mm-hmm. likes it so as you bat as you see the uh we talk about them battling there will also might be another battle between <laughs> me, <laughs> me my dislike <laughs> and your 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 uh you're uh, I guess you watch the show. Yeah. You wanna, you uh, to, this may actually be the uh the pod this may be the episode that ends this entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we stayed out of this multiverse for so long, but now <laughs> we may get two, we may get two films because they're doing another multiverse of madness film, the Teen Titans Go. <laughs> Well, and I want to talk about it. I need to talk about it because it is just as kooky. <laughs> we'll see if we make it there. But <laughs> <laughs> well, for now, it's time to dive in to actually see if this podcast and our friendship will end after after 20 odd years. With <laughs> as we open up, we're at the Teen Titans Tower in the Go universe. Uh, there's a crime alert happening as Robin finally finds the the T the T cell as he you know, now all the Teen Titans are suiting up in their most epic scenes. And of course, they had to do the most important thing because before you head out, please make sure to feed your pets. Yep. And here's going to be our first contrasting moment because <laughs> there is an extended <laughs> gag where they're taking like five minutes to feed Silky. And I get the whole like when a joke is long, it goes from funny to not funny to back to funny again. It never went back to funny for me personally. I was just like, <laughs> can we please get past this gag and go to the next scene already? I will say I also did not like this gag. It made no sense to me because I was just like, at this point, we you might as well just have give you might as well solve whatever crime was happening. <laughs> right. But we jump immediately now to Robin telling the team that it's time to go. And honestly, we get into the, I did like this title scene, this title setup because it is basically the entire movie in 30 seconds. <laughs> so even if you don't want to watch this movie, you can still understand everything that happens as we see both versions of the both universe of the Teen Titans facing off against each other in these really cool stop, um, stop scenes playing alongside the original song from the Teen Titans t- TV series. So the one that's like T-T-T-N-S-T. Yeah, that way, how you spell Teen Titans? I think that's how you spell Teen Titans. <laughs> yeah, right after we get to the intro, we go straight into the Teen Titans fighting one of their classic rogues, Gentleman Ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh, and th- this, this setup is pretty funny. Gentleman Ghost can possess pretty much anyone he wants. So he's going he's possessing this intimidating looking man who tries to rob a bank without a weapon and an old woman at the counter is like no weapon what <laughs> if this isn't gotham but i must have transferred because she's ready to take him out <laughs> <laughs> where did she get that from <laughs> look she- <laughs> I, i'm telling you she came straight from gotham to jump city and she ain't playing no games <laughs> oh my god but yeah she um she uses her taser to electrocute the guy. And as the biker falls to the ground, this is when Gentleman Ghost reveals himself. Everybody starts screaming. I do think this scene was just like very fun because of course he got the, the gag as well. It's just like the big muscle bound, most jacked dude in our film, or actually probably like 17th most jacked dude in our film. Yeah. He is screaming as if he's like a little girl in a way. And now Gentleman Ghost is trying to escape with the cash that he's acquired. But fortunately for the bank, the Teen Titans crash through the window, causing unforeseen amount of future damage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the start of their the amount of reckless damage. All the Teen Titans, not just the Go versions. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, cause in this movie, the final fight. Jesus. Um, so, you know, the, you get another great gag where 
they're trying to stop the ghost, but all their attacks go right through him because <laughs> he's a ghost. But when the ghost tries to, when the ghost tries to pick up the bag of money and go, uh, somehow Robin is, I guess Robin is hitting the money bag. Mm-hmm. So therefore the money bag keeps staying stationary and the ghost can't take it. And um, the ghost is like, you know, this is so annoying. And they can, they say the best line of this movie, we can be annoying all day, which is <laughs> the thesis statement of every Teen Titans ghost storyboard meeting. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it is legitimately a funny one. <laughs> So now we see that Jem Ghost, uh, he is kind of OP in his own way because he can possess any of the Teen Titans as he throws himself into the mind of Robin, controls his body. We get a little kind of a gag where we see um, all the different what's really happening in each character's mind as Robin is just basically these are all little scenes from the show already like Jack right Robin being his most Jack self just just basically jump roping him dressing up as Batman talking about fitness power being the best that there is but this gives gentleman ghost an opportunity to escape with Robin's body as well as the um bag of money too so they now that the Titans have to chase after him um in some crazy scenes i do i do want to say this it's like at one point they do um they do stop because they see that robin being possessed by a gentleman ghost is helping this old woman across the street but they immediately tackle both of them to the ground and put a bigger beat down on robin than the guy who stormed the stage at that dave Chappelle show oh yeah <laughs> yeah this is jason todd level beating teeth fly out and everything <laughs> And Gentleman Ghost immediately realizes why possess the weakest Titan. Uh, hot take. <laughs> um, <laughs> but am I wrong? Uh, but Gentleman Ghost goes over to start try Starfire out. Of course, her head is peaceful and, and everything. But Raven easily stops Starfire. So he goes into Raven, which everyone who knows anything about Raven knows that is the hugest mistake you can make going in Raven's mind. And he finds a little red crystal inside of a vault. Yeah, and it's very similar to the crystal we've always seen Raven have on her forehead. As he goes over to grab it, it starts to crack. And we see a ooze-like monster make its way out of it. And as the Titans in the in the real world, they are just basically just playing around now with their knocked out friend. They're drawing mustaches on her face and putting a tower of cards on her head they immediately now see that gentleman ghost gets kicked out of raven's head as she starts transforming into this giant shadowy kraken that immediately unalives him yeah they confirm that too (laughs) yes (laughs) that guy's dead and they're like oh oh (laughs) (laughs) oh didn't know you could die twice in this go universe but okay So now the gem is cracked and the condition is getting worse. And as we see in the next scene where daddy Trigon lets her know that her demon form will break out the more she uses her powers. So he's like, here, here's what you can do. You need to let the demon, let the demon possess you essentially and take over your body or you can hand your demon form over to Trigon and then he'll do what he see, sees fit with it, you know, achieve his dream of ruling uh, the multiverse. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll give it a point. It is a very good and interesting conflict to put Raven in of being able f- for her to give up uh, this darkness inside of her or at the cost of losing herself and, jeopardizing everyone else's life yeah i agree and i do like th- these next couple of scenes starting with this one we get a lot of quick explanations which again they all make sense they all make sense for the characters for the story at least to me i don't know that we don't get this much um exposition in teen titans go to take the tv series so i'm, <laughs> so I'm happy we got it now <laughs> but as raven walks out there she shatters the mirror and as trigon seems to be speaking with himself we see another group of eyes actually swarm around him 
as they're saying that they need to move forward with the true plan. So now that we have, we see these eyes and we have to shift our eyes now to Robin, who is showing us that he apparently might have actually been the person to give Mark Zuckerberg the idea of the metaverse because (laughs) he is putting on his Oculus here as he starts a fight against himself. And I gotta say, this is some damn good foreshadowing of this film. Because again, who who else would you fight to fight the best if it's not yourself? Mm, mm. Snap, snaps all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this definitely reminded me of that old Teen Titans uh, Cartoon Network Flash game, the fighting game. Mm, um, mm-hmm. That's that's what it gave you more nostalgia for. Um, Unfortunately, it's ruined by the Teen Titans being absolutely obnoxious to Robin <laughs> while he's trying to play this game for the next minute or so. Again, this for me, one of those jokes that goes on a little bit longer than necessary. But shortly after this, after Cyborg activates his Super Saiyan toaster mode, um, <laughs> <laughs> things start going sideways because it seems like there's a crisis on at least two earths or maybe infinite <laughs> we see a purple portal open up outside of the window of, teen, of the titan's tower uh at first it snaps for a quick second and we they're just thinking that it might have been connected to the toaster that cyborg put on his shoulder for some reason <laughs> um and then they realize that it's an actual kind of incursion event where a ship is making its way from another earth which we quickly get explained again as Robin's looking at his um, Titan cell, fo- cell phone as he's seeing that the energy is explained that it's from a different Earth. And now, bef- as they're trying to figure out what's going on, they're immediately interrupted by these mass figures breaking through Titan's Tower, grabbing all of them, taking them away. Uh, Cyborg and Beast Boy immediately get taken. Uh, what's the name? Starfire also gets immediately taken. Raven is able to teleport herself away from the person's arms. As Robin is trying to show that he can pull off every single animal karate move that he could think of, he immediately gets wrecked with like either a kick or a punch to the face that swings him around five times and shatters each of his teeth. Yeah, how many teeth does he have left at this point? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the Go universe has some crazy good dental plan. Yeah, I think your teeth just grow. <laughs> Everyone gets dental insurance in that reality. So fortunately, Raven it does have a bit of opportunity to escape little by little, but the mass being that's following her uses very similar power set that Raven has to bring her closer as they take all the Titans into the ship. As now the Titans are freaking out when they're first introduced to the villain who has called them there today. Yes, the master of games. He says his goal is pretty simple. He just wants to find the best versions of every character and in the multiverse. And to do so, he pits them against each other. And again, this is where I have to concede again. There are a lot of funny little in-jokes here. (laughs) Uh, When he says, you know, there are all kinds of universes. There... (laughs) That, uh, I forget who says it. I think it's Cyborg or Beast Boy where they say uh, there's a 0% chance there's a world where we are beloved by all. <laughs> yes. <I'm> like, <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> uh, there's also a guy in, there's a spectator crowd and one of the guys in the crowd has a sign saying, you ruined my childhood with a strike a, a, through Teen Titans Go. I can appreciate being represented in a Teen Titans Go movie. <laughs> it was like, are you sure that just wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I drew that in myself. <laughs> so as they're being explained to the whole situation the Master Games has put them through, there are, he explains that, you know, do you want to now fight against like the best version, other versions of yourselves to find out who is the best? And Robin's all for it because, you know, he this is canon throughout the the actual series where he's just like he always wants to fight always wants to prove that he is better than everybody else that he's the number one superhero so that's when the master games reveals that they've actually already fought against themselves and technically have taken an l 
and she shows them that the mass beings that took them from their tower are actually the Teen Titans that we know and love from when we were growing up, the 2003, or I'm going to, just for the sake of not getting confused, I figured we'd probably call them the OG Titans versus the Go Titans. Yeah, I was uh, also toying around with Toon Titans. Toon Titans is good. But there are <laughs> Toon Titans that actually come up later on. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> oh, that was a yeah. little spoiler for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Go Titans and OG Titans works. Mm. As yeah so because the og titans are taller they are more serious that's just the rules Mm -hmm. um so immediately they are pitted against each other and i do like uh when the ravens are charting against each other everyone's screaming but the ravens are giving this lazy ah you know (laughs) it is very raven and here's where the movie's greatest strength and weakness becomes apparent for me personally right here um, in order to find a middle ground between the animation styles, the Teen Titans goes are, are animated as as normal. Mm-hmm. However, the close ups, particularly for the OG Titans, look like flash animation essentially, yeah. and the animation dip in quality is startling, <laughs> especially since there are later parts in the movie where they do fully animate uh, animators in specific styles for brief moments. So it does feel like corners were cut either through cost or time for, to balance out the OG Titans. Yeah. And you know, the Timmy power hour, Timmy and Jimmy power hour did this back in the day (laughs) where they either adopted the styles or coexisted. And even though that was 3d and 2d. So I really think they could have done better with making a middle ground of animation. No, I definitely agree. I think it was because it was a bit rushed. So I forgot to mention this, but this movie came out in 2019. But the idea of this movie actually got dropped in the first Teen Titans Go movie as a post credit scene. And that movie came out in 2018. So I think they were trying to really rush this out to, to try to capitalize on that moment that big moment that happened because i actually i also went to go see this in theaters and i loved every second of that teen titans go movie (laughs) (laughs) but they i think they were trying to get this out as soon as possible knowing that they had created too much of a hype that they needed to um that it would have taken too long especially with everything else that was happening between 2018 2019 i think we had like the DCAMU was ending, the, the Avengers movies were coming out. So there was a lot of stuff that was happening that they were like, we need to capitalize on this hype. So I can see why they cut the corners on the animation. Yeah, it, it, there's definitely a struggle to choose where to give a lot of detail to the OG Titans and where not to. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, um, it, it, does, it is striking. At some points, at some points, I did wish that they just had animated them taller, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or and but in the same style as Teen Titans Go, if they were going to go with this uh, instead of trying to downgrade the the OGs. Yeah. Um, but I will say the benefit here we get start getting as they fight, as we get into these uh, hero versus hero fights is that each of the five main cast members does an excellent job at differentiating between their go selves and their OG selves. They're even same voices, but somehow, you know, this cyborg is not go cyborg. Mm -hmm. And for everyone, even Raven, whose voice is very monotone, somehow they find a difference between Ravens outside of lines. So I I do want to salute the, the five Titan actors for being able to bring that to the the animation because it definitely makes a big difference definitely agree shout out to just the voice actors and the work and the talent that y'all do every day to make these a possibility so as robin faces off against robin cyborg faces off against cyborg um raven and raven don't want to fight each other starfire the starfires have a weird fight um the thumb war the thumb war yeah i they at first they were like we don't want to fight against each other because they're realizing how many similarities that they have including their nine stomachs we get extreme close-up on 
um while that's i'm surprised that starfire doesn't have like an 18 pack at this point so yeah. <laughs> so and then beast boy from the go universe is just basically running from his og counterpart which is a, a fun little moment but the starfires have this crazy intense thumb war that i want to say is probably one of my favorite scenes of animation because we see the blast even if they started off with that joking scene of the thumbs actually looking like they were going to war it was it was great it was probably one of the most best animated scenes i've seen probably in this film oh yeah yeah it's it's fantastic uh i i think that was my favorite of the 1v1 fights Mm -hmm. they all have their perks but definitely that is the highlight so after a while because the og titans are taller and no other reason they <laughs> end up uh leading the five v five match uh by three to one and that's when Damon demon raven emerges again she single-handedly takes out two of the titans leaving just og raven um using light spells you can really tell she's going all out just to stay in the game mm-hmm. and as on the sidelines, the OG Titans are very, making it very clear that they were just playing along. They did not care about the results of this fight. They just wanted to see what um, they were brought here for. And as the Ravens start calming down and trying to find a middle ground, that's when the whole illusion drops. The Master of Game says, this was a lie. And I do luck that... Uh, there's a joke for Beast Boy that when he finds out the crowd was simulated, he says they weren't even real and they were rooting against us. <laughs> <laughs> Same, Beast Boy. Same. <laughs> Attention, nerdy knights. Join Flo, Anders, and me, Colleen, at the well-rounded table for Bohemian Geek Studies, where we take extremely dorky dives into our favorite fandoms. From that Star Wars galaxy far, far away to Outlander Scottish Highlands, we consume it all. Listen along with us each week as we explore the stories that mean so much to us. Bohemian Geek Studies is available wherever you get your podcasts and is proudly part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. So this is where the Master of Games reveals that he actually is not the Master of Games. This is all a, a lie. He, he is actually Trigon. He is um, our to go universe Trigon. He's been pretending this entire time. And as the OG Titans break out of their cells, this is when they're realizing that, wait, if this is the Trigon of their universe, then maybe the hands that are holding the two Ravens down to the ground are actually the Trigon of their universe. As now the OG Trigon rises up from the ground He is bringing up all his power at about 90% full because another fun little gag, he didn't absorb enough power from the OG Raven. So he does need both of them. And uh, he does, he's left with one missing leg, causing them to call him tripod. (laughs) Excellent (laughs) five-star John Mulaney level humor. And... uh, (laughs) As the two Trigons get away, the uh, Teen Titans, Go Titans, and OG Titans are left falling back into their home universe. Another great gag. Again, I'll give it to them. While they're falling, the OG Titans, uh, the Go Titans are stressed out. How are they going to survive the fall? The OG Titans are like, uh, why are they stressed out about falling at all? And they easily use all their skills to (laughs) get to the ground safely. And everybody makes it to the ground safely, except for uh, Go Robin, who crashes in the ground, presumably losing even more teeth. So, again, there's a little bit of a, as you might expect, there's a culture clash of like, how do we work together? How do we get unified? And the only way to bridge the gap is with a rap song. Are you adding this rap song to your iPod? That's my question for you. (laughs) Hmm. It almost made the cut. I think it was, it's definitely, it definitely was on my Teen Titans Go playlist for about like three, four years. For No, three or four days tops. It wasn't the, to me, it wasn't the best, but I did enjoy it because it was the visual gags of 
them being kind of dressed up as rappers from the 80s in different styles like salt and pepper um LL Cool J and Criss Cross and the funny thing that they did too is that if you look at their shirts they have one three and zero three written on their shirts to indicate the year that they actually came out so I thought that was just a fun little gag that they did to show their show them working together and in speaking of working together we see that the trigons of different earths are working together in their new hellscape with the ravens being held captive we also do get a little visual gag too of um uh, how jordan green lantern being held captive in hell as well as uh mr mixoplexus mixoplex something like that <laughs> close as we're gonna get yep <laughs> and they basically as Oh, Go Raven is waking up. Trigon of the OG universe is revealing his plan, how their plans to work together. But Go Trigon is making it seem as if they are actually working together, while OG Trigon is just like, nah, I'm the only one that needs to be feared. It is me and me alone. Yes. So we can already see that their uh, their relationship is not going that well. Um, back at the tower, we go. We again cut to see how the team is doing, which leads to a much less effective song. Because um, while I did give the rap song a few great lines, like "My Terra died," that's a bummer. Um, and I had to rewind several parts when they mentioned the go ratings were so high. Um, <laughs> it's like you did not believe that was true. <laughs> it's like no, you must have got that reverse. So. Um, the interdimensional portal device is called the Whirly Guy Gig, Whirly Gog. Yep, Whirly Gog, Whirly Gog. Um, so they do a song about just how fun it is to say Whirly Gog, and at the end of the song, they do admit it, it's to pad out the screen time. Um, in a no, if the song was better, I would have respected that joke, but the song isn't, so I don't <laughs> respect the joke at all. <laughs> uh, this is, of course, followed by another great scene, Academy Award winning, maybe, where uh, down in hell, which the Trigons are, I assume, the, uh, they try to, the Ravens convince Trigon, the big Trigon, that he is thirsty. And we get a great, uncomfortable, full, what feels like three years of t- Trigon just licking his mouth. Something I'm sure some corners of the internet are into. I personally could have done without. Um, of course, this eventually leads to a plan where Trigon reaches for a drink and the Ravens are allowed to escape to walk <laughs> into the OG Titans universe and have to walk to get to their Teen Titan Tower destination. I do want to point out that in order to escape hell, they came out of a sewer. So um, this is just a funny thing to me because I'm thinking back to our DCAMU days where Batman just basically was all up in them sewers all the time. Was Batman just rolling through hell? (laughs) Was that now just like the message that he was trying to bring forward? Oh yeah, they don't want him. They don't want him in hell. (laughs) He's such a narc. (laughs) So now that the other teams, the um, OG and the GO teams are working together, they're realizing that they do need a plan. Uh, at first, they were trying to just, the GO team was just saying that we just go outside and do our own thing, to try to figure things out. But they decided that this time around, they'll listen to um, the OG Robin to figure out what to do. And his plan is, is that he's realizing that if the Warlagog existed in their universe, then there must be a version of the Warlagog that exists in the GO universe. And they're trying to figure out where it could be. And by thinking it through, they're like, it takes you everywhere you need to be, no matter how long it takes, you could probably, um, it's probably possessed by someone who always knows when you're asleep or awake, whether you're bad or good. And this leads the Titans to face off against their greatest adversary, actually, in the Teen Titans Go universe. Santa Claus himself Mm. now i assume this is a teen titans go running gag that i don't know about (laughs) oh yeah they actually face off against santa claus every holiday season it's a holiday special that they have there's sometimes as starfire says sometimes they do face off against them sometimes they actually do team up with them but there's always the betrayal ah yes yes okay makes sense to me (laughs) um because that would explain why 
the Go Titans mow through a bunch of elves and other security guards to try to get to Santa. But he does have one last line of defense. Mrs. Claus, wielding a big claw, called her Megan. Um, She (laughs) does mention Mrs. Claus was her mother's name, which brings up a lot of questions about the legacy we don't we don't question canon stuff in the teen titans go universe okay good good (laughs) because i had some questions and this does lead to a random holiday themed battle not sure what date this movie came out but you got uh grenade ornaments that explode you got candy cane key blasts um and the battle is eventually they turn the tables by cyborg activating Act attack pattern alpha. Now they do make a joke to address using attack patterns in battle, but when did Robin practice for when you're fighting Mrs. Claus at the, <laughs> the North Pole? Make a formation for this because I'm just gonna go on a limb and say no, no. <laughs> so in that case, you're saying that something from the OG universe makes less sense in the Go universe. I I will admit I'll concede when something doesn't make sense in either universe and this has makes absolutely no sense at all. <laughs> well, they are able to take down the clauses for a short period of time and acquire the world of Gog from their universe. So from the Go universe, as the Teen Titans teams are now heading out, we get this really cool scene now, which again understand it from the go universe don't understand how this is possible from the og universe as both cyborgs combine together to create a a ship of some sort that the titans can roll around in so that they can travel through the multiverse with the use of the world of gog and there's a fun little gag at first where the um where the cyborgs unfortunately form the wrong thing and then they turn into the thing that they want leading into this high speed chase as Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus are chasing after them in the in the sleigh and the, with the reindeer as the as the Titans are now traveling through a beautifully animated multiverse. This looks like it's pulled right from the DC map of the multiverse that they always put together. And I love this scene because we get a chance to see different sets of Titans throughout history. Oh, yeah. As the reindeers are shooting um, Omega beams at uh the, 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 from dark side presumably at the titans we see comic book comic book titans that are 2d on the page we get mermaid titans where robin has a bra for some reason um <laughs> we even get uh you know the dcau titans looking very well starfire nightwing looking very intimidating and uh yeah some of the worlds they visit are jokes they made earlier about proposed universe so it's a great way to bring back like that animal bunny universe that where a cyborg is a bunny, it does exist because, you know, infinite worlds. Mm-hmm. So as they are traveling throughout the universes, Raven and Raven are just tired from all the walking they've been doing because uh, they don't walk, which is a great, <laughs> which is a legitimately funny joke. They're always floating. And Trigon, unfortunately is smart (laughs) enough to realize that Raven would probably go back to the Titans tower. So he confronts both Ravens and at the moment. So OG Raven is not destroyed. Go Raven lets the demon out and gets absorbed. The demon gets absorbed by OG Trigon. Now the Titans are still trying to figure out how to get back to the Go universe or the OG universe for the, um, to save the Raven or as Beast Boy would say, the Raven Mamas, um, as they pull off the most epic Fast and Furious move known to man, hitting the brakes as now, because they're stopped between Earths, Santa and his ride crashes into them, causing it to flip into back into the Go universe, I believe, as they get trapped in a mall during the month of December. So now all the kids are just swarming them trying to get their Santa's attention. So now the, the Titans are trying to find their way back. They figure out that Raven, the Ravens must be in the in the OG universe. So they head on over there for the final battle as they witness the soup now super-powered Trigons coming into existence. 
Yeah, and as he's ready to just tear everything up, uh, he insults Gotrigon <laughs> a lot because <laughs> uh, he's so small. Um, but Gotrigon has a secret ability. Um, since he is a demon, demons are able to eat other demonic beings or magical beings and absorb their power. So he is able to animate his mouth so large that he consumes OG Trigon in one bite and becomes the deadly Hexagon, uh, featuring two butts <laughs> and twice the menace. The butt joke again goes on way too long, but you know that by now. What? That was the uh, greatest length of butt jokes I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> uh, it would have been greater if it was about 15 seconds shorter. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, lot of Trigon butt shots. Again, we're not on that section of the internet. Uh, so <laughs> after Toon, uh, Trigon did his great ape transformation into Hexagon, Robin counters by summoning all the Titans he can in the multiverse. Why he didn't su- summon some actual heroes uh, is <laughs> a question you can have for yourself at home. <laughs> um, so you could just saw infinite Supermans, guys. Uh, but we see... Per- we see a, a quarter piranha beast boys. We see a starfish sour fire. We see a cyborg that is a trans, legitimately just a transformer. Uh, any any of your part, my particular favorite is old man Robin. But do you have a favorite variant of um, Titans that you saw? My, yes, mine was the from the plant, the animal versions of themselves. Or Beast Boy was legit just a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I loved it so much because homie was wearing the bow tie and the later hose in. And I was just like, how did that even come about? <laughs> so now that the Titans of Infinite Earths have assembled, they hear the call of Titans together as they all face off and using their abilities against Trigon. Unfortunately, the only team that doesn't really do well are the Mermaid Titans because apparently they really actually needed water in order to fight. <laughs> Unlike Aquaman, they cannot come to the surface. <laughs> so this, we also get a reveal that the Gold Raven has lost all of her demonic ability. And she's just like a re- regular chipper little girl now. And this is where, as they're noticing that they're losing this battle, Beast Boy heads over to her and just says, we need you to get back into this fight because we're losing. And Raven of the OG universe backs him up saying that, you know, we're losing everybody here. Everybody actually seems to be dying at this point, trying to face off against Hexagon. So she, the go Raven is just like, but why does it have to be me? Why can't I just enjoy my life as it is? And you would think that the OG Raven would give her this like really compelling speech, but she says, because my mouth won't animate that big. <laughs> that was a very good line. I'll give it that. <laughs> um, and it it's great for a little meta stuff from the OG Titans. Because the Teen Titans, the, uh, the course of Go Titans are meta all the time. So it's nice to hear the OG ones have a little fun too. So Raven consumes a bunch of Ravens like Pac-Man and turns into this uh this all the unkindness form which is mm-hmm. badass mm-hmm. giant flock of uh ravens team up together um at this point when i see this fight in the city this version of jump city is fucked i <laughs> gotta say they they're not coming back from this because trigon they they smash through buildings they destroy pretty much every infrastructure and power line in this city. I don't know how they're going to financially recover from this. <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about that because the OG's universe is done anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their, their universe, they're going to need some interdimensional contractors because <laughs> damn, they, their tower even gets hit with an ax. It's done. At, but at a point they realize even the unkindness form is not going to be quite enough to topple hexagon. So go Titan. OG Titan decides to trust go Titan and let go Titan just wing it. Mm. And go Titan says, toss me up there. Let's get that whirly gog. 
Um, and it is fun how they get him to the worldly god. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, in an earlier scene when during the fight, they were able to Robin of the OG universe uses his grapple gun to um, wrap up the Go Robin, and he does a similar move into turning him into like that paddle ball thing to send him over to grab the Whirly Gog. And now it's up to them to try to figure out what to do with it. And Go Robin has only one thought, and that's to eat it because everybody else was eating things. <laughs> much as logic as the universe deserves <laughs> there there's also this nice piece of it where they realize they that uh raven needs to get that demon back it's the only way so they aim to crack the crystal uh they crack the, the crack uh trigon hexagons <laughs> Hexagon, oh my god. Yeah, with his two butts. Two with two butts. His two butts are distracting me. <laughs> They're right here. Um they crack Hexagon's qu- crystal and let the uh demon back into Raven, which gets a nice, really nice scene where Raven has to accept that her demon half, her inner demon. If you've ever seen any episodes of Naruto, it'll feel very familiar to Naruto and the the Nine Tail Fox. Um, but she does have to make she makes inner peace with the demons and it's implied that from this point on she'll use both sides uh, equally Uh, so as Trigon ends up on zombie earth um, for uh, Teen Titans zombies I'm sure as a spinoff somewhere uh, we get another great gag where as they're all trying to get home Robin go Robin tries to steal the Nightwing outfit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and go back into the DCAMU. And I wish I could tell him, bro, that is not where you want to be. <laughs> yeah, based off of what happened in that last film, you would not be there for long. <laughs> <laughs> or he'd be the, the longest survivor, either <laughs> or. <laughs> That's true. So they are able to stop him from going back as they take him back to his uh to the Go universe where we get another fun little gag as Go Robin realizes that the Teen Titans of the OG universe still have the World of Gog. So they tr- he tries to take it back as well. But this is where the OG Robin pushes him away and shows like how stressful, even though they had such a great time, they share it. They're like, you know, you are a great superhero. You know, I really thought you were annoying at first and you still are. Um, they had a great time. They had a great time cooperating to show that they really are great heroes. Um, but Robin of the OG universe is stressed out. So he's just like, I need to take a vacation after this. As we now see that the Go universe Titans are truly relaxing after s- completing another multiverse threatening crossover event in their lives. But this immediately interrupted when Darkseid comes out of a portal with his parademons to attack the Go universe. <laughs> And in the movie's last funny joke, <laughs> they decide, hmm, not going to deal with it. <laughs> and they just <laughs> let the world be devoured by Dark Side. Presumably, this is where some other the heroes, if Hal Jordan ever got out of hell, will help because the Teen Titans go or sending this one out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that is it. That is our film of the Teen Titans go versus Teen Titans. There are so many things that we could try to figure out in terms of the scaling, but I have to go with this one. How many of Robin's lost teeth are you given this movie? We can also go with how many butts are you given this movie? <laughs> uh, you know, to accurately capture the 5v5 nature, I think it's only appropriate to give it a 5.5. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing i i wanted to be generous i really did but upon hearing that they rushed this film out and that before when i was willing to accept the animation flash as a stylistic choice but now upon hearing that they deliberately could have taken more time and more care on this movie and just chose to capitalize on um the, the trend of nostalgia and seeing the OG Titans again, I will, that's where I'm giving it 5.5. Most of it for laziness. Uh, <laughs> the other half of it is, you know, 
yes, you have to make these versions separate enough from each other, the OG and the, the Go. So you have to make them turn up the obnoxious scale. But if you are a casual uh, or hater of Teen Titans Go like me, <laughs> it, it, it can be grating to sit through. I will say... I legitimately, and we'll we maybe talk about it one day, Teen Titans Go versus the movies. Mm-hmm. What it did was it had a good balance between the Titans being annoying and also legitimately sh- delivering a message about the team that applied to every member, about this inadequacy, about this feeling lesser than. And here, it's really so heavy on Raven that it's about Raven's personal journey so whenever Raven is not on screen, the movie doesn't really have a good way to anchor anything serious to the rest of the team members. Robin has a complex, but it's really treated for laughs. Mm-hmm. And the other three members of the team, as great as, as fun as it is, they don't really have any arcs in this movie whatsoever. They're just kind of there. Uh, so, yeah, it feels it feels rushed. There's a lot of great jokes, a lot of great inside gags. So for that half of the movie, strong five. But the (laughs) 5.5 it's missing for me is character development, the animation, and just that first gag right from the beginning. I just knew I was not going (laughs) to. This movie was just not going to do it for me. Um, But what do you you think? Oh, man. So... I actually have two scores for this because as a Teen Titans Go fan, I do have to give it a score for that. Um, so in terms of the as a Teen Titans Go movie, it's a it's a solid seven. Like seven, actually, I'll even go say eight. This is the second film, as I mentioned, in the Teen Titans Go universe. The first one was great. It had a lot more gags, a lot more. Um, musical numbers in it as well that actually made sense um, but this time around it does feel like you were saying it does feel a bit rushed I think they did a great job in some small things knowing that like just the explaining of things parts I think though I do think that as a comic book reader you will understand it more if you were watching this for the first time out it's a it's a no and that's the other reason why I had to drop it down to a lower scale because of the fact of like I feel like in order to really appreciate this movie you need to have watched all of the show, at least at that point. By that point, it had already dropped five seasons, it already dropped a feature-length film. So I think you needed to do all of that in order to really appreciate it. So that's why it's a seven as a Teen Titans Go movie for me. As a movie by itself, being my straight critic self, this is like a five also. <laughs> so do not worry. I am up there with you. It's just like a lot of stuff. I think the agree that the Raven arc did make a lot of sense. It did work. I think it was more leading into the fun side, which is like, this is a movie for like, if you're hanging out, just need to do something at 2 p.m. Maybe if you're a parent and your kid is into this, this would be a great movie to watch alongside with them especially if you are a growing up comic book fan like we are. So if you like the fact that the two universes colliding in this way, this is a great movie to watch. However, you're not looking for this for the deepness. You're looking for this legit for the gags, legit for the fan service, legit for the two butts, if you are into that part of the internet. Uh, so I think that like, agreed that this is a, this is a five movie as, as itself but definitely a seven as a as a Teen Titans like go movie. And ironically, if you are looking for how you do a Raven centered story with the rest of the Teen Titans where everyone gets equal development and story, go back to our Teen Titans versus the Justice League video. Yes. <laughs> ironically. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one that one works. <laughs> Yeah, there were no double butts in that one. There was no butts shown except for Nightwings, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, not bad. Not yeah, bad. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> but yeah, that is our movie. And I got I got I was really shocked to find this out, but I got some comic book knowledge for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> so the Whirlagog is real. 
the world of Gog is a real device within the DC multiverse. I don't believe it. <laughs> and it looks exactly the same. Pretty much almost pull as they did it in this movie, more or less the same in the comic books. And the world of Gog, which first appeared in Superpowers number five in 1984, is a Jack Kirby creation. So you can already tell that this is going to be the wildest, weirdest thing that you'll ever hear about in your entire life. Because Jack Kirby loved doing things like that, all these like new God story arcs and everything. So the world of God, just like it was in our movie, is a device that the new gods have. It's actually a part of the source wall as we we're talking about our multiverse 101 um, across the DC first episode. So if you want to know more about the source wall, head back over there. But yeah, the world of God is actually a device used by the new gods in that gives this wielder the power to bend space and time. It was first held by Metron of the New Gods. He is that being who stay being in the chair because, I mean, to be honest, it's a very nice chair. Uh, but also it gives him all the knowledge of the universe, allows him to travel, which he does with the help of the World of Gog. This is how he um, is able to travel between different universes and how he was able to help the Justice League travel between dimensions and different universes during the events of the Rock of Ages story arc from that where uh, Darkseid won and he got the anti-life equation. It was how he was able to get the different heroes from different universes to come help and stop Darkseid from winning and taking over. After that, he it did end up being lost. Lex Luthor found it. He Lex Luthor decided to use it as a way to distract the Justice League while the Injustice League were going out and committing crimes and whatnot. But ultimately, it was found, once again, given over to Metron, who then gave it to our man who you'll know from the justice society he's the being that he's the person that is able to turn to give himself superpowers for one hour based off this little sun hour the sunglass that some was the sun called oh an hour uh hour, hourglass. Yeah. hourglass yeah that's the thing yeah so, so he just stall him for an hour and you're good <laughs> <laughs> yeah hold him down for an hour after he's turned it <laughs> But yeah, uh, our man became the new Metron at one point. So he was in possession of the of the World of Gog. And this led into another crisis event. Honestly, the, the history of the World of Gog is so confusing because it's such an old time um, plot point and device that I will say, if you want to know more about it, definitely check out the 1984 stories that came out because once, um, spoilers, our man was killed by during one of the crisis events, it basically just went back into Metron's back closet being held somewhere. Hmm. And that legit is the, all everything you know about, you need to know about the War Legog. So I guess you could say Our Man's Time was up. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, but it was a fun hour. Because again, just real quick, the War Legog, I almost forgot, the War Legog actually is a map of the entire multiverse. So you could probably do a lot of damage in that hour, but for our man, he didn't really get a chance because, uh, you know, clock was ticking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all the comic book knowledge you need because, again, Teen Titans Go does not take themselves seriously. You do not need to know everything about comics in order to really enjoy the show. It is just a fun series if you're just looking for some laughs and gags. And if you are a DC comic book reader or a DC animated Asian fan, then you will see a lot of the gags that come up in the films that you will just, or the TV show that you will just know and love. Like there's, I think at one scene in the film where Raven flips around her, her mirror and you see that the mirror is made by mirror master studios. So, <laughs> and I will give them, there was a, a great cyborg gag where cyborg. Uh, yeah. Where the OG cyborg tries to brood and um, go cyborgs like, Hey, Hey, what did we say? There's no downsides to an awesome robot body. Again, it had it had its moments. I'm not gonna lie and say I was dead and looking at the screen um, <laughs> like it was a uh, any blood titled DC movie. <laughs> but uh, it did, or uh, Static Shack, or um, but um, yeah. Just uneven. Uneven is the, the, the word of the day. 
So does this mean that you're willing to give Teen Titans Go another chance? Hey, you know what? I like Teen Titans Go to the movies. Um, I think we really should legitimately talk about it. So I don't seem like a pure Teen Titans Go hater. As for the series, uh, probably not. <laughs> not gonna lie to you, probably not. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe the holiday enough. specials. Maybe, Maybe a holiday I'll... special. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna dedicate the whole season to Teen Titans Go. Just, <laughs> dear Lord, no. I would be replaced very swiftly <laughs> by someone else in the multiverse. We'll we'll get the uh, another version of you. We'll find we'll talk to the master games to find another version. The ultimate RT alteration. You find use the whirly gog to find a new one of me. <laughs> so, and another question I have is: uh, so recently it was announced that the Teen Titans Go will be doing another multiverse adventure. So, do you think that the Teen Titans Go? have the keys to the multiverse now at this point do you think that if for your future if you do have anything to do with the multiverse should the teen titans go be a part of it look i'll say this if they take the time to really like really harness these characters and give these characters something to do and animate them properly um, I think it can they can be really funny because one of my favorite Teen Titans Go jokes is when they go back in time to try to undo all the hero origin stories and they save Batman's parents, but they regret it. So they go back and push Batman's parents into the alley <laughs> while smiling like those. If they do more kinds of gags and take advantage of those kinds of gags. I really think they can have a strong story. So I'm willing to let them get the keys again if the film is not made within the span of a year. Mm, okay. Well, in that case, I will tell you to not go see um, Teen Titans, go see Space Jam. Uh, nor should you probably watch <laughs> Teen Titans Go and uh, the Night Begins to Shine. <laughs> oh my God. They're everywhere. They're infecting the multiverse. <laughs> this is what Pariah warned us about in the DC, the CW show. When he was wearing Wells's face, he's like, beware, the Team Titans Go are destroying the multiverse. <laughs> Team Titans Go are definitely agents of uh, Perpetua from the, <laughs> from the Across the Multiverse. Yep, they are Pariah, Perpetua. They all warned us about the Team Titans Go. And yet, I'm hooked. I am hooked. (laughs) So speaking of hooked, next week, we're going to cover what will probably be the most interesting adaptation of a video game we've ever seen. And will it be good or will it do an injustice to its source (laughs) material? Um, (laughs) Bet you can guess already where we're going. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, uh, not sure if I'll be hooked like Scorpion would in the Injustice games, but we we shall see. (laughs) There we go. There we go. Dust off your controller and give the worst one to your best friend next week. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, very much looking forward to that. And as you close out, remember to take care of yourselves and always remember that it's okay to be jokey or serious. Just make sure to be your ultimate self. And if you're into the two butts thing, put on safe search, please. We don't need to know about it. (laughs)